I've been lucky enough to see some beautiful things in my life. I've been able to uh, hike down the Grand Canyon to the bottom oh. and look up. This is amazing. Majestic. I've been able to go to the Grand Tetons in Yellowstone up in Wyoming and Montana. I've been able to look out over Paris from the Eiffel Tower, hiking up the stairs. But Brad, this past weekend, my family and I went to the San Diego Zoo, and I saw something that was perhaps one of the most amazing things I've seen in my life, yeah. which was I saw a male African bull elephant uh, stands about 10, 13 feet tall, weighs about 12, 13,000 pounds. It's the largest terrestrial mammal on the planet, right? Uh-huh. Uh, I, I stood about 20 feet away from this thing as it took a leak, and it was amazing, <laughs> Brad. It was amazing, Brad. Majestic. It was it was majestic. Nature was on full display. I was amazed. Mouth agape. I couldn't look away. I I I I went to shield my children's eyes, but I said, "No, they need to see this. No, this is no. important. <laughs> this is well, this is life." This yeah, is what was life. that like? Okay, so imagine you've gone to to Target or Kmart or Toys R Us, and you bought a child's pool, right? Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. then you take the full hundred gallon contents of that child's pool. And you pour it down the air duct of a small air conditioning system, and <laughs> and at the force of a jet, this elephant peeing was amazing, Brad. It was amazing, and I I say kudos to nature because I I was blown away by what I was witnessing. <laughs> <laughs> now let me ask you this: about how long did it take? Because that's a lot of urine to move. How long did it take? Brad, it took an ungodly long amount of time. I was like, how much have you been drinking, my friend? Your your urologist is going to be so proud of you because you've been taking in a lot of water. Maybe he had a prostate problem. That was it one steady stream, or or did it start and stop and start and stop? Can I, I'm, can I'm you telling imagine, you, Brad, if, Can you imagine if I'm like, listen, pal, uh, we're get, we're getting up there in age, and you're going to start noticing some changes. Um, <laughs> well, here's why I ask because did you know they did research on this, and the average amount of time it takes to avoid your bladder for all mammals is 21 seconds, regardless of size. It's true of a bull elephant, and it's true of a mouse. Can I just say to the audience listening at home or at work right now, one of the things I love about Brad Gagger is I have sprung on him the idea that I saw a bull of elephant pee. And he knows <laughs> offhand that it takes 21 seconds for a mammal to void their blood. How do you know that? How do you know that offhand? <laughs> It came across my social media somewhere. I it, probably one of those things you read on like Imager or Reddit. It, it just it just came across my uh, my transom, and I thought uh, that that's something that's worth knowing. I mean, let's face it, you're never gonna forget the 21 second pee rule. Doesn't that feel though like sometimes science can can make uh, declaratory <laughs> statements that you're like, no one's checked this. Can you imagine the scientist is like, it doesn't matter what the mammal is, it could be a tit mouse. It could be a blue whale. It takes 21 seconds for them to void their bladder. That's science. All right, That's moving on. Let's talk about black holes. <laughs> science is just making shit up. Nope, doesn't matter. It's a church mouse. Holes. It's a barn owl. Doesn't matter. It's 21 seconds to pee. In 21 seconds. We're going to move over to black holes and find out how long it takes them to pee. Yeah, how long does it take a black hole to pee? Anyway, all right. Thank you. Oh, there's the bell. I'll see you next class. All right, everyone. I've been your teacher. Uh, <laughs> I've been your teacher. Please tip your waitresses. <laughs> Please tip your waiters. Well, on that note about bull elephant, bull, uh, bull elephant, I got there. Boy. Bull elephant urine. Let me say hello, everybody, and welcome to Comic Lab, the show about making comics. And the show about making a living in 21 seconds from comics. I'm Brad Geiger, (laughs) editor of webcomics.com and the cartoonist of Evil Inc. And I'm his friend Dave Kellett, who's very impressed at how he rolled that in. I am the cartoonist of Drive and Sheldon and co-director of Stripped. And this week's Hour of Comics Advice is made possible by your support at patreon.com slash comic lab. So Dave, Dave, let's talk comic sponsorship. That's right. This podcast this week is once again sponsored by our friends over at Wacom, W-A-C-O-M dot com, maker of Cintiqs and Intuos and all sorts of drawing products. And the thing that I wanted to tell you, Brad, this week that uh, I found within the last six to 12 months as a fantastic use for my Wacom is when I get commissions or when I get customers some drawings of people that want something framed up like physical art 
right? Yeah. Uh, the the amazing shortcut that I have found is to do all my early iterations on my Wacom and then yeah. print out a near final version that I can lightbox and draw for the people that are getting commissions. And I got to tell you, it's made it faster. It's made it way more efficient. Uh, and I think, frankly, the final product, the art that people are getting in the mail uh, is so much better because I done the, did the pre-work on my Wacom. And uh, yeah. so I got to say, even with my original art, it's helped my career uh, having that puppy in the studio. So it's really appropriate that they are our sponsor this week. And so we give them a big shout out to Wacom over at WACOM for uh, sponsoring the show. Fantastic. And now the other thing I got it before we get too far, because we got a big show lined up today. Big, big show. I got to find show. out h- how's everything going? <laughs> African at bull Annette? elephant big. We're talking. <laughs> this is going to be. <laughs> well, I it's, it's, speaking of which, I wanted to spend about 21 seconds talking about your Kickstarter. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, logically enough, it's it's over at anatomykickstarter.com. And how are we doing? How's the flow? Oh, how's the flow? Well, <laughs> based on when this show is coming out, this should be, I think, the last week for the Kickstarter. So let's oh. hope that I'm not crying in my soup. I think I'm not. Uh, Hopefully it's, it's not well. too late for people to jump in. No, not at all. We're, we're yeah. uh, finishing up the stretch goals for the book. Um Adding in stuff like a built-in classy ribbon bookmark. Oh, I love those classy ribbon bookmarks. Uh, I know. I actually do. I think they're they're do. they're they're frankly silly, but they do add a certain value to a book. They're fun. Yeah. Uh, and then it's a cloth wrap spine. It's going to have end papers. It's going to be it's going to be safety sealed in a, in a little plastic. Oh, it's going to be great, Brad. You're going to love it. It's going to be great. Uh, I, I love lo- it. I, I I love it already. I love it already. So that's over at anatomykickstarter.com. And then this week, my friends, on the show, we are finally, finally, after long promised many months, we are going to talk about our one-year goals, our three-year goals, and our five-year goals. And Brad Geiger, I have to say, in friendship, it has been a little bit pulling teeth to get you to do this. I, I and I'll tell you why, now that we're, now that we're doing it, uh, uh, because I, I've been dra- pulling teeth is the polite way of saying this, and I'll tell you why I don't like this idea. Uh, uh, because here's the deal: we we share a lot of ourselves on this show, and, and uh, very openly, very freely, and 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 part of it is that that's kind of who we are, and and that kind of transparency is important. But it also leaves you feeling very vulnerable and very exposed, and. Uh, that's one thing when I'm talking about work that I've done that I'm prepared to stand behind. It's another thing when I'm talking about something like this, which are, are goals and aspirations. And I'm I'm really opening myself up more than I want to. And oh, what okay. happens is inevitably, inevitably, this is what's going to happen. We're going to share these goals. Uh, and I'm going to say in three years, I want to do X, Y, Z. Which means in two and a half years, somebody's going to, uh, uh, you know, if Twitter is still around or whatever, they're going to uh, hit me up on social media and they're going to say, hey, Brad, I thought you were going to travel to the moon in three years. Whatever happened to that? And it's bad enough to, to miss a goal that you've set privately, uh, uh, but it's even more painful to miss a goal and then have a complete stranger rub your nose in it. And so that is why I've been avoiding this, because uh, I know that some of these goals are going to hit. Some of these goals I'm going to miss. I'm okay with that. What I'm not okay with is having somebody even, and I say rub your nose in it, that person who tweeted might be tweeting from a complete position of being friendly and nice and 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 just wants is was curious to find out. Hey, whatever happened to your three year goal? Right, but but you're mind, internalizing because, it as a point of yes, pain. Yeah, and because I consider that a failure, I'm going to feel like they're trying to shame me, right? <laughs> because that's how you internalize things. Uh, so I'm just putting that out there. I, uh, I I I this is why I was uncomfortable because I'm okay. Uh, missing goals uh, and, and choosing which goal, which failed goals that I ch- uh, that I share, uh, putting myself out there to this extent, and then knowing that I'm going to have to deal with this in in three or four years is uh, a little bit intimidating to me. Well, I want to tell you in friendship, thank you for sharing that because you're right. It is 
it's like saying, hey, everybody, I'm starting on a diet. And then three months later, and you're 10 pounds more. And you're like, dang it. Ah, why did yeah. I announce that? Why did I announce that? Just do it quietly. So yeah. I get that because it's all, it is a, it is a sensitive thing to want to do better and then feel called to account when you don't, you're, you either made a little bit of progress, but not the full progress, or you didn't make any progress. And that I respect that you're sharing that is the reason why you didn't want to do that. And I respect you even yeah. more that you're doing it, even though you are apprehensive about that potentially happening three years from now. So honestly, I'm saying this honestly. I didn't have a choice. I didn't have a choice. I, 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 every 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 week, or I'm sorry, every month when we would put out the call for solicits, we'd have some people saying repeatedly or, or different people saying, uh, when are you going to do that 135 show? When are you going to do the 135 show? Uh, so it, it, until we finally did the show... Uh, <laughs> It was it was clearly not going to go away. I was I was hoping <laughs> that it would that yeah. if we could just let it settle to the bottom of the fish tank. It was never going away. So this is the only way to get past it <laughs> and then just deal with the chips as they fall. Let me give you and our listeners a reason, a couple of reasons why I think people a wanted it and why I think it's also important for us and they to do it. Right. Mm-hmm. So one is. Uh, it's kind of like that old Paula Poundstone joke about like, why do adults always ask kids what they want to be when they grow up? It's because they're looking for ideas. That's why they ask, <laughs> right? Um, yeah. So people want to hear our goals because I think it will be instructive and helpful for being like, okay, I can reorient my goals to be X, Y, Z, or Brad's doing this. That's not quite for me. But if I change it a little bit, I could do this for my goals, right? People, yeah. uh, it's helpful for all of us collectively to use one another as guideposts to how we're doing, right? It's a, it's a basic human aspect of a, of a herd animal, right? Um, yeah. But then also, Brad, I think one of the reasons, and in your heart of hearts, we've talked about this, you you know it to be true, um, is that uh, one of the reasons why it's important to set goals is, A, you're going to get distracted by a shiny object. And when you do, that's okay. That's a natural thing. But you yeah. need to have that North Star to redirect you again to go, all right, no, this was not one of my goals. It's very fun. This project looks neat, but it's not what I wanted to do. It's just what's catching my interest in this moment, right? So there's that. Yeah. And then B, the second one is, I have found that if I personally don't set goals, Brad, life has a way of setting goals for me. And so <laughs> yes, I suddenly look up five years later and go, wait a minute, I did not intend to be a light keeper in Maine. How, why am I running this lighthouse? This is not what I wanted to do. It's five yeah. years and I'm, I'm, where's California? Where's my cartooning? So <laughs> if I, if I don't set my goal, life will kind of put one in there and be like, all right, you know what, but you're not going to set a goal, but then you're going to end up being an accountant or you're going to end up doing this or that. And, and so, right. uh, because sometimes you just have to make ends meet. And so if you want to make a cartooning, uh, your career or even a pro-am or even a hobby, you have to make time for it and plan for it. It doesn't just happen on its own and goal making is a critical part of that. So what Brad and I have yeah. done is we've put together a PDF that you as a Patreon backer can grab as an exclusive off the site. It's over at patreon.com slash comic lab. And it's a simple one page PDF that has things broken up into one year, three years and five year goals. And within those years, there are projects that are your goals. These are the physical uh, objects you're going to make or the the uh, artwork you're going to work on or the things you're going to film or the podcast you're going to record. Those are the projects. And then the second chunk of goals is going to be financial. That's all the money. That's all the money handling. That's your accounting. That's your bookkeeping. That's how you're going to handle your tax load, all that stuff. And then the third one is a little more nebulous. It's creative development. What are you going to do to make yourself a happier artist, a better artist, um, new projects that aren't necessarily project specific, but maybe they're task uh, generalized. Like I want to learn how to oil paint, for example, Brad, or yeah. I want to learn how to, uh, I don't know, compose spoken word poetry on the spot, uh, whatever the creative development is for you. So Brad, that's, I think, a good summary of what our goals are today on the show or what our goal uh, description is. Anything you want to yeah. add before we jump into your goals? No, no, you've done, you've set the table nicely. Okay, so first up for today, then, is uh, Bradley J. Geiger of Philadelphia, PA. Brad, you're going to do your first-year goals, your three-year goals, and your five-year goals, and then I'm going to chime in, I think, with what I had foreseen for you, right? Is that the way we're going to do it today? Yep, that's exactly right. So I'll do mine, and then you'll do the ones that you wrote for my career, and then we'll discuss it, and then we'll reverse it and do you. All right, great. 
So here's what I've got for one year goals. Uh, and this is starting right off with admitting failure. In, in 2018, I had planned, and I use that term loosely, uh, three Kickstarters and I executed one. And in 2019, I had planned two Kickstarters and executed zero. And we could talk about why zero Kickstarters uh, as a little tangent uh, to the show, if you'd like, because it's actually pretty instructive. At this point, Dave, it's September. Even if I launch the Kickstarter today, uh, there's no way that I'm going to get it, get the books in, and get everything shipped out uh, by the end of the year. I'm looking at uh, very possibly carrying that money into the next tax year and then paying taxes on it. Mm-hmm. So at this point, I've accepted that I'm not doing a Kickstarter this year. Uh, I'll I'll be looking at launching it in February. Uh, but uh, so and 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 like I said, if you want to circle back around to why zero Kickstarters, I'll tell you exactly where the wheels came off the wagon. But my uh, uh, my thought is, I need to do two Kickstarters next year and. Uh, part of the uh, part of the uh, uh, of the reasoning, uh, uh, part of the reasons that I, I failed one of those Kickstarters is that I I, I need to hire a freestanding editor for Web Comics Handbook. I, I I thought for sure I'd be able to work that in, and it's just impossible. Uh, it's not happening, and uh, it, it, I I think. It's going to be imperative for me just to bring somebody in, hire them outright as an editor and help to put that book together because I've got all the raw material for that book. I just I just need to I just need to edit it right. in the truest sense of the right. word. Right. So so uh, projects for one year, two Kickstarters, including the one that really should have gone this year and uh, the Web Comics Handbook second edition. And part of that uh, uh, well, is can I, hiring. Can I pause you for a second? What was the other yeah. Kickstarter? You didn't mention what the title uh, was. Uh, Evil Ink After Dark, right. okay. the second uh, volume of that. Right. Okay. So I'll do After Dark first, uh, hire an editor, uh, get the Web Comics Handbook uh, online. And, you know, if, if that all goes well, uh, it, it's possible to do a third, but it's not on my plan. Financial, I want to grow my Patreon by about 8%. Uh, so here's what's happened on Patreon. In the last couple of years, I've flatlined and I flatlined at a very nice place. <laughs> I've got no complaints flatlining. Uh, in fact, in a certain way, it's kind of nice. Uh, it, it, it's uh, it's a false sense of stability, but it's stability nonetheless. Uh, but uh, I, I want to I want to grow that by eight uh, percent. Part of that I, I plan to do through special offers, and the other part is I need to start thinking. I, I've seen Patreon content exchanges working really, really well. In other words, uh, we've talked about this on the show, Dave, where I say uh, with somebody doing work similar to mine that is exclusive to their Patreon, I say, okay, I'm going to give you uh, a little PDF or a sampler. You can give this as a bonus rewards to your Patreon backers. You give me something of yours that I can give to my Patreon backers as an extra reward. And what happens inevitably is that we both end up picking up a lot of new backers through exposing the other person's uh, backers to our stuff. So it works super well. The problem is, I've got, did you hear how long it took me to explain that? A, a good solid minute and a half. <laughs> I, I have a hard time explaining this concept to people who are doing the kind of comics that I'm doing. They, they're super protective. It's got to stay. It's got to stay behind the paywall. It's got to stay. In a, at, or either that or they're worried that they're going to lose people because they think, well, what if they like yours better? I'm going to lose a bunch of patrons. Oh, geez. It has never happened that way. In fact, I've, I've charted it a number of times. In, in, in every case that I've ever tracked the numbers, both boats rise. It's a lifting to- uh, tide that rises both boats. Uh, but But that's what people are worried about is losing patrons. Uh, so I, my challenge for 2020 is to find a way to communicate that idea and and drill into that community, mainly of not safe for work uh, cartoonists, uh, drill into that community this concept of content exchanges and make it a make it something that I don't have to ex- every time I've number one I'm always approaching people uh, for the first time. 
Uh, after that, then they approach me. Hey, I've got a new project coming up. You want to do another exchange? And the answer is always yes. <laughs> Why would I ever say no to offering bonus stuff to my uh, Patreon backers? They're delighted by it. Uh, but I've but but for the first time, I've got I've got a copy and paste this three paragraph this is how it works this is how we're gonna do it blah right, blah blah right right my challenge for 2020 is going to be to find a way to make that commonplace to the point that i don't have three paragraphs all i gotta do is say hey do you want to do a content exchange yep okay well so by the way i got that idea from brad not and i mean, got that idea i stole that idea from brad and i yeah. want to emphasize that if ever anyone ever approaches you uh with your comic it's a great idea i wish i did it more often because it's a great exchange between patrons i don't want to beat a dead horse it's just it's a great idea and i want to underline that and so keep going brad that i think that one's great so for my creative development uh that one was kind of a gimme at, at, at least part of it is uh i definitely want to go to the uh, alaska robotics comic camp in 2020. Uh, I'm, I'm not missing out on that again. And also, uh, I found about this uh, training uh, seminar, uh, this training outreach that they do in Greece. Uh, my, my older son was actually going to do it over summer vacation this year, except uh, they changed their insurance requirements and, and he had to be 18 to do it. Uh, and he was only 17. He might do it next year, uh, and I'm thinking about maybe doing it along with him. They go to Greece, and they go to refugee camps, and they do training with people and try to teach them how to do a lot of journalistics-type stuff, like how to re report, uh, gather information, how to, how to present information. And, uh, you know, Alex would be, you know, showing people how to use things like video recorders and how to edit video to, to basically tell their story and help to get information out. Oh. And I was told when we were, we were, when we were going forward on this, I was told that, uh, they're always looking for graphic designers to help people, uh, you know, build information, uh, communication type things, you know, how, and now that we've got this information, how do we put it out in a way that people will understand it? And so I thought I would love to take a month and do that. And I could work remotely uh, that as long as I could get electricity and a Wi-Fi, I could I could take my uh, my uh, my Wacom 12 WX with me and work anywhere. Uh, so I'm thinking about really strongly uh, doing that for maybe a month. And uh, and that I think would uh, I, I don't know, there's so, there's something about that that says that I would come back uh very charged up creatively after after having that experience. Yeah. So that's yeah. my that's my one year plan for that. Okay. So now we move into three years. I think right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So what are your projects within three years? Three I keep year cutting plan, you off. Sorry. Uh, the Evil Ink website, which I have been stalled out on because frankly, it it's it, it it's stuff I don't really understand to the extent I I'm smart enough to know how dumb I am. <laughs> All right. And I know my spider sense tells me pulling the trigger <laughs> on this website is going to create more problems than I know how to handle. So uh, the three year plan is to pull the trigger on the right. Evil Link website that incorporates uh, Patreon uh, content uh, and also is a completely different way of displaying my comic and, and really a, a different way of, of uh, approaching web comics. And to do that, I'm going to need to hire a webmaster. I'm going to need to make another hire at some point, uh, which is somebody that just comes in on a part-time basis and focuses completely on that. And part of that is also going to be either uh, this webmaster or bringing in an intern who could do this as part of their internship. It's going to mean paywalling the Evil Inc. archives. I've got archives going back to, I think, uh, 2005. Yeah, that's when Evil Link started. It was 2005. Uh, all that stuff needs to go behind a paywall, and that's going to take just grunt work, you know, just manually moving files from here to there. Uh, so that is something that is a three-year plan. And also, uh, in conjunction with that, building a freestanding subscription website for that content, that like the Not Safe for Work content, that is not Patreon-based. Because I'm there, you will find no bigger cheerleader for Patreon than than me, and I freely admit that I'm a, I'm a total mark for those guys. Uh, but uh, we have to take a look at 
uh, protect. I've got all my eggs in the Patreon basket, and I need to protect myself if it ever mm-hmm. happens that they falter or change to the extent that, and, and it might be a change that like it, there could always come a day when because of some law or some ruling that they can't carry not safe for work content anymore. I need to be prepared for that. I need to be prepared for any of the right. many things that can happen. Right. And what that means in my mind is that I need to have a free sanding subscription service um, that's ready to shift to if and when something happens with all of the eggs that I've got in my Patreon basket. So that's my three-year plan. And again, that involves hiring a webmaster uh, to, to focus on all of those things. Uh, financial, I, that also is uh, you know build in the subscription uh, website to start uh, generating that revenue and to have that ready to go. Uh, also, remonetizing archive Patreon content by the time and again th- and again that's going to be something that probably will take like an intern or uh, uh, you know somebody that I that I hire on a part time basis. Uh, at at the point that we're into three years, I right. started doing not safe for work. I think in 2015. Uh, three years from then, I will have a lot of content that, frankly, is going to need to be remonetized. Whether that means uh, putting v- uh, the first two books of Evil Link content uh, into a, a bigger volume, uh, whether it means releasing some of that stuff in e comics and e books, uh, which right now it doesn't exist for the most part, uh, any place other than Patreon. Uh, I've got. I'm going to have a lot of content there. And and I'm I'll I'll definitely have enough stuff to do like an art book full of commissioned illustrations. There's a lot of stuff, and um and I'm right now it's it's just sitting there. So by the three year mark, I'm going to try to remonetize a bunch of that Patreon content that's been a really good performer for me online. And my creative development is uh, uh, working towards getting invited to a comic convention in Japan. Uh, oh, our family. Oh, Brad, yeah. you stole one of my goals. What a great goal! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I we went to Tokyo one time, and I it was uh, the we spent two weeks in in Tokyo and Kyoto, and I'm telling you, I it was, it was among the best 14 consecutive days in my life. It right. was fantastic, and I know it would it would charge me up, and also it would be again it, it, the the comics scene and the comics culture is so vibrant in Japan. Uh, uh, and, and that would probably mean also going to like Osako. And I, I think, I think it would be something that would be a fantastic goal, uh, to have. So I'm, I'm putting that at my three year mark is, is building my, uh, reputation to the extent that I could actually, uh, find acceptance in a, uh, a guest situation at a Japanese convention. Uh, I got three years to do it. <laughs> we'll see we'll see if i can pull that one off so my five-year plan at this point i will be i will have been doing uh evil Inc. for an awful long time and i've already rebooted it once restarted it uh this week in evil Inc., uh two of my characters came to a very uh a, 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 a pivot point in their relationship and their storyline and the storyline is going to take a very different turn from from this week on and i know where this all goes and in 5 years it means that i am very much going to want to uh bring evil Link to a close that means i need to start thinking about what comes next and uh part of that it means that when that happens i'll be a little bit more comfortable a pitching evil ink as a tv property or a movie animated property something like that i can i can right. be more comfortable doing that and also i need to start thinking about what it is that i'm going to do next and i do have an idea that i'm not going to share uh at this point but i do have an idea of what comes next uh, uh that might not even be superhero based at all it might be a completely different thing after having been doing superheroes for 
uh, 15 years. Now. God, yeah, that'd be fun to see yeah. uh, something non-superhero from you. That, that's yes. great. I mean, we see it already with Cape Carnival, and uh, but I'm just saying like anything new that we get from yeah. you, like, I'm, I'm excited for that. That's great. So that's, that's my five-year plan uh, in terms of projects. In terms of financial, I think at that point, I am definitely be, going to be looking at uh, maybe doing something similar to like what Scott did by bringing in a co-writer when he brought in Dylan McConnus. I think at that point, I'm going to definitely want to have somebody co-writing and and at least sharing some of those creative uh, chores for the strip so that I can be uh, transitioning into some other things. At that point, again, in five years, I'm going to have a metric ton of content that needs to be administered. And uh, as you've noticed, about three or four of my goals involve hiring. And, uh, yeah, I, I can see, I, 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 I well, I, again, I, we, that, that actually goes back to that zero Kickstarter uh, conversation. So we can, we can, we can circle this all around, but I, I don't want to Jerry or <laughs> I don't want to, uh, it's not gerrymander. What is it when you keep talking and talking in the Senate filibuster? Uh, I call that, uh, oh, I call it Brad Geigering. Um, <laughs> I don't want to filibuster too much more, but I, I want to uh, I want to hire a co-writer at the five year mark, uh, and again repackage and redistribute twenty five years of content, uh, and uh, it, and at that point also, it, just as a, an aside, my older son in five years will be finishing college, and my younger son will be in the middle of college, which means that uh, my finances are going to be very different in five years. <laughs> Oh, God, yeah. And I'm going to need to really be on my toes and uh, everything's got to really be cranking away at this point. And for my five year creative goal, uh, I want Comic Lab to be invited to Angolem. Oh, interesting goal, my friend. All right. Yeah, I think at that point, after having done it, done it for seven years or whatever it will be at that point, I want us to build this show to the stature that uh, that we're uh, doing uh, a live version of our show with phony French accents and Angoulême. <laughs> I love it. All right. Well, thank you for taking us through that, Brad. That was really yeah. – also, it was instructive for me to hear where your uh, – your your North star lies, like where, where do you want to end up and what do you want to be looking like? Yeah. And, uh, I have a better sense, even as a friend, I have a better sense of that now. And so, um, what's fun is a lot of my goals for you. Now we'll transition into me talking about my goals for you, uh, are similar actually to what you had planned. Mm -hmm. Um, and then there are a few that are very different. So let's dive in. All right. So this is Dave Kellett talking about my proposed goals for Brad Geiger. Right. So for one, the year one, within the next 12 months, uh, you have to have to have a new Kickstarter for Evil Ink After Dark. Um, yeah. I think the webcomic book goes second. I think the Evil Ink After Dark book goes first because it's frankly a bigger money spinner and it's a um, it has a long tail that can continue into the new webcomic book uh, kickstarting as well. Yep. So that's uh, project number one. Uh, second project, and I actually pitched this to you the other day. Um, I would love for you to start putting one original art piece on eBay every month, just to start at a month level. Um, and yeah. part of the reason I would love to see you do that is I want to encourage you and me to cultivate new income sources. And I think eBay would be a nice supplement to you that you don't currently have a lot of. Yeah. When you do it on the regular, like for me... Uh, I try to do a new eBay piece every week or week and a half. And over the course of the year, it ends up making like five to $8,000 a year. And that adds up. That's real change. Like any individual one, you're not building a career on, but that's a nice supplemental for the, for the whole year, you know? Yeah, so, absolutely. Uh, if I can get you to even start shooting for 2,500 or $3,000 of eBay sales a year, uh, what a nice supplement. I think that would be great. And cause it gets you to where I want you to go with a hire. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, also this year, Separate from anything we do as Comic Lab, I would love for you to try out a pin um, because I think it's a, a really nice, uh, it's not a huge money spinner, but it's easy, it's fun to do, it's easy to store, and it's easy to ship. Yeah. Um, and the margins are great. And so I would love for you to try that as a new income source. I want, in general, for you to establish, uh, just because it's been, I, I would love it to be two, but even if you could get to 
definitely, definitely kickstarting one book a year. Um, and ideally two book a year. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm not saying this as a criticism. I, Brad, no, I after, agree. I after agree. my most recent one was born, it took me like four years to get back on the two books a year system. Like, it's not easy. I know yeah. it's, it sounds easy for me. Like, Brad, you got to kickstart a book. Like it's a lot of work putting together a book and a Kickstarter. So, um, anyway, but once you get into a pattern of, of kickstarting one in the summer so that it's available in the fall for Christmas sales and then one in spring so that it's already in summer for a San Diego Comic-Con in my case uh it's it's helpful to get into a pattern because then you can't let the month slip without going oh shit I got to get the book ready that kind of thing right and then my final project for you over the next 12 months is I want you to reduce your Patreon exclusive posts um and now that's going to sound counterintuitive oh, to you really yeah. But you have put a lot of eggs in that basket of like, look at Brad's made Mm -hmm. 7,000 posts this month and here they're all exclusives and here's the chart. And I think you are over delivering, frankly, um, and in a way that's not getting you more people at this point. Um, I think if you threw more effort towards the the eBay sales and the pins, that's going to bring you in more money. You're not going to lose anybody on Patreon by diminishing it 10 or 15 percent in terms of the output. Um, Mm-hmm. And uh, I still think you'll be the same level. That's just, now. This is just a thought. Um, financial right. wise, for the one year project, um, I'd love you to get a hire that expands for to twenty or thirty hours a week. What do you have right now? What is your current situation? Uh, four hours a week. Four hours a week. So, let's say you got someone up to twenty hours a week. They're three years out of art school. They're energetic, uh, and they are. Uh, they might have some other supplemental job, or they're maybe they're going still going to grad school, having graduated from college, and they need a supplemental. Twenty hours is a great amount of time where, when they're there, they're working. They're they're do working projects, you know that kind of thing. Right. And then I really think that having someone there, twenty hours a week, will help your output tremendously. Um, mm-hmm. So that's something I would love to see. And then uh, my proposal for you over the next twelve month is to have a goal of growing your Evil Ink Kickstarter ten uh, percent. Um, that's seventy five people, and I think that's doable with a different kind of outreach. Um, and that's something we can talk about. Oh, okay. And then creative creative development wise, um, I think the Alaska trip will be great for you. Um, and so I'm excited to go on that with you. I hope you're still able to do it. I think it's a great way to both recharge your batteries to meet a lot of cartoonists that you and I wouldn't otherwise run into or bump into or cross paths with. And in general, you come away with a sense of uh, uh, an, an enlightened and happier heart. And it's, it's a good trip. So I think you'll love that. Yeah. So that's for, that's my goal for one year. Um, any thoughts on that? Anything that you're surprised by, or you want to take umbrage with, or, or you're like, Oh, oh no, I, I, everything you said, I agree with. Although I do want to hear about different outreach for evil Inc., but we can talk about that. Uh, in an upcoming show. Yeah, let's t- let's table that one for an upcoming show. Yeah. Um, so for three years, uh, I ha- and I don't think you should do it within the next 12 months, but within the next three years, uh, a site redesign. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's interesting that you had that on your page too. Oh, yeah. What I would really love to see you do, because this is going to be a money spinner, is I really want you to do a 300 plus page Evil Ink After Dark hardcover Maybe leather bound or something that feels classy. Mm-hmm. And by leather, I mean probably a faux leather uh, or uh, something that just feels like, oh, this is a nice book. Yeah. You know, like you've put, you kickstart it in such a way that it, it cut, like you, it starts off as a hardcover, but the, the stretch goals are that it gets classier and classier and classier. Yeah. Um, I think that if you have a 300 page book, you can be selling that one for 50 plus dollars and it's great margins. And I, I honestly, within a three year range, I think you can have stories in there. You can have past commissions in there. You can have a uh, free floating artwork in there. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I think it'll do really well for you. Um, so that's my three year goal for you on that. And then, Financially, by this point, by the end of three years, I would love for you to have hired a full-time employee, Mm -hmm. um, but I would love for it to manage it so that uh, that full-time employee is not only paying for themselves, they have managed to raise your income, if you know what I mean. Right, Um, right. That's the key part, is that uh, the first couple of years, you're just trying to get it where they're paying for themselves. And then if you can get it within the third year where they're they're actively increasing your income too, uh, that's great. And then I would love to see you try to shoot for raising your Patreon by 50%, and that would be about 1,100 patrons. Mm-hmm. That would be a huge difference and would go a big way towards paying the, the salary of that employee. Um, 
And then somewhere in the three to five year range for creative development, I would love for you as part of Comic Lab to come to San Diego Comic Con for fun. Yeah. Or alternatively, we both go to New York Comic Con for fun, where we're not selling. We're just we've been invited. We're going to do a Comic Lab there live. And then we're maybe walking around the show just to see it, you know, because you only yeah. because you haven't been to a big show in a few years. So it, it'd be fun for you, you know, that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and then within the three year goals, too, I forgot to mention uh, the projects. Uh, I think uh, the web comics book absolutely can land within the three year period there. Yep. Um, and then honestly, for five years, I don't have a lot for you, but I think that all of my goals for you are landing in that three year of like getting a full-time employee will be a big deal. And we'll, yeah. uh, w- once they're up and running that you're going to find that to be a life changing experience in how, what you can produce and how much you can produce and all that sort of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, anyway, so the big ones for five years are you've now doubled your personal income and I want you to, to write that one down five years from now, you have doubled your personal income. Yeah. And I'll tell you why that's true. Not that it's like the secret or anything where, mm-hmm. cause that stuff's bullshit. Well, Brad, I put it out into the universe that I'm going to double my income <laughs> and the universe has sent back flowers in love. But here's the thing. It's not, it's, so it's not the secret. What it is, is mm-hmm. you are seeing that pinned up on your wall of like, here is your income in 2019. Here is what your income is going to be by 2024. And Even if it's not something you could do on a day to day basis, you're constantly looking at that number going, what am I what am I doing right now? What can I be doing different? How can I be taking action on this? Uh, Should I be watching this TV show or should I be doing something? You know, that kind of thing. And basically, it's for you and me. Uh, there are times in life where you need to get a little hungry again. Mm-hmm. And we were hungry in our 20s. Yeah. And we were also hungry when when Patreon was starting. But I will be honest, I, and maybe this is unfair to say to you, so I'll say it only to me. I've let myself get less hungry. Mm-hmm. And it's uh, hunger is important because not necessarily for the money, that's not as critical, but the money allows you to do things with your art. And that's what's critical. Right. You can do more and more interesting things and you can do it with less stress and that's critical. You can do it with less anxiety. So it's, it's, I don't want you to, uh, to take away from this, that, uh, it's a, like a hard nosed capitalist is not, it's just that money allows you to live a better art lifestyle. And mm-hmm. that's why, uh, I want you to shoot for doubling your goal. So that's that's my Brad Geiger goals for the one, three, and five year. What are you What are you thinking about? I that? like those. In fact, I agree with I, I agree with all of them. I, it, the whole idea of uh, throttling back on the exclusive Patreon posts uh, is a challenge to me, uh, mainly because it, it's like one of those things that it, it, it's it's a constant conversation I have in my head. That uh, one voice says you probably have about the same number of Patreon backers if you throttled up, throttled back a bit. And then the other voice says, do you really want to find out? Because if the answer is that you lose a bunch, now you've got to try and get them back. And uh, I, I, I spend a lot of time getting to the point where I've got this many and and things are going as well as they're going. I'm really terrified to uh, screw with that too much. Uh, (laughs) I get it. I understand. So, but it is something that uh, it does play on my mind, and 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 something that I might be able to do very incrementally. And and part of it is that even if so much of my messaging for Patreon is, and in fact, it happens once a month where I say, in 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 terms of trying to be transparent as well, uh, if you're a Patreon backer, uh, you know, last month I posted 32 exclusive posts, and this is how it broke down. And this is what I posted. I think that's important for transparency, but it's also a big uh, part of my outreach because so much of what I'm doing is exclusive. That means that people can't see it. So if they want hmm. to access it, it's it, one of the I can't show them what it is, but I can tell them there's a lot of it. <laughs> yeah. Right? Well, I so I uh, p- what comes across when you're doing this mm-hmm. as a third party. Granted, I'm an interested third party, but a third party nonetheless is I feel clenching. That's what I feel. Yeah. Um, when you're like, oh, look at everything I'm giving you. Isn't it worth backing me <laughs> yes, on Kickstarter yes. Patreon? <laughs> oh, God, don't go away. Ah, I would be such a good lover. Ah. That's what it feels like. Uh, yeah. 
Uh, Especially that last part. I know. Well, that's what I mean. Like, because it feels like a junior high kid, usually yeah. a boy, who's like desperate to date. Like, why don't you like me? Oh, I'd be so good to you. And you're like, good God, run, run, Easy. don't hide. Yeah. So, well, yeah, slow it down there. So, like, what I'm, let's put it in a generalized term. Yeah. It's not like Disney goes, hey, you guys all loved A New Hope, right? That was only 72 minutes. The new Rise of Skywalker, 78 minutes. Oh, shit. Look at, you got to go see this movie. Yeah. Like, no one's doing that. Like, right. It's no one comes to art looking for a quantitative answer as to why they go for art. So what I'm saying is um, you, they become patrons based on how they feel, yeah. not based on what their logical mind is telling them. And you are giving them enough. I'm telling you as a friend, you are giving them enough. In fact, I honestly think you can throttle back 10, 20 percent on the exclusive unless that's part of your policy of like building up exclusive art that will go into the hardcover book, which I respect. Right. But maybe there's a way that you can diminish your workload because 90 percent of these people are givens. They're not going to leave you. Yeah. Uh, if you throttle back a tiny bit. Um, and so that's where that's coming from. Yeah, I appreciate that. that and that's definitely something I'm going to be thinking about in the next few weeks. Um, and it's, again, that said with love, because yeah. I want you to expand what you're able to produce uh, rather than um, hitting the drum on the one thing that's already working. You know, right, like, right. Uh, I think you can, I think you can throttle that back, even if it's slowly, even if it's quietly. You don't ever have to say, you got 400 pieces of art last month, but now you're only getting 390. All your messaging has to say is, you're getting 390 pieces of art. Holy yeah. shit, Brad, that's still amazing. That's you're the, producing an amazing amount of stuff that are Patreon exclusives. Yes, as as with marketing, always, you, you're, you're just accentuating the positive. Exactly. Yeah. And so I'm telling you as a friend, you are producing enough. Even if you produce 75% of what you're producing right now, mm -hmm. you're producing enough. So that was my thought. And we can talk about that more in the future, but oh, that, yeah. that was my thought. Fantastic. Hey, if you're listening while you work, take a minute and stand and stretch. And while you're doing that, Brad and I are going to tell you why you should join us on Patreon. Yeah, because, you know, when you do, you'll get hours and hours of podcasts that we've recorded just for backers. And an exclusive Patreon post that go even deeper on the Comic Lab topics. And access to our exclusive Discord server, a thriving community of professional cartoonists. So you can support the show you love and get tons of actionable resources for your own cartooning. And listen, if you can't swing a pledge this month, no worries. You can still support the show by rating us wherever you get podcasts. Leave us a five-star review and a few kind words. And that, along with mentions on social media, is incredibly helpful. And now, let's talk comics. So, Dave, now that I've been in the hot seat, <laughs> it's your turn. Uh, let me hear. I want, I'm, I'm really interested to hear what you've come up with. You've got one-year, three-year, and five-year goals. What do you got for Dave Kellett? All right. For the next year, the next 12 months in my projects, I have a fair amount. Uh, this is probably my the, the most full of the 135. I get more nebulous and kind of blue skyish with the five years. So uh, <laughs> we'll start more concrete. So uh, go projects for this year, I want to bring anatomy of authors to market. Um, I mm -hmm. want to do uh, create and bring to market a children's book, something that I've never done before. Um, I want to create four to five new pins. Um, I want to start a podcast with my wife called Threesome with Dave and Glow, and where we interview uh, one artist friend every week, uh, a different like a writer, artist, director, cartoonist, oh, actor. That sounds like such a great idea. Uh, and I love the title Threesome with Dave and Glow. I think yes. that's funny. Um, yeah. And I think that'll be fun. So we're going to start that podcast. Um, I'm going to be starting with Fred Schroeder, a uh, cartoon... How do I describe it without giving it away? I'll just say it. A cartoon interview television show. Uh, and I'm not sure the final format of it, somewhere between 25 and 45 minutes, really classily shot. Uh, that I hopefully will be starting or making its way into the world within the next 12 months. Mm. And then, um, okay, so that's it for projects. Pretty full list. That's, that's pretty good. Um, and then uh, within financial, I would love, love, love to get Comic Lab to 400 patrons. Yeah. It's currently around 270. I think 400 is doable within the next 12 months. Um, and the reason why I say that is uh, it makes it better for uh, the audio equipment we can work with. 
Um, if it makes it more interesting about some of the things we can do with the show when we have more patrons, you know, Brad? Yes. And God forbid, it would be lovely to have a little bit of income from it, but we're not really there yet. But uh, <laughs> but it, was, it I think with 400 patrons, we can really do some interesting things. And then with Drive, I would like to get it up to 1,000 patrons. Um, I think right now it's like 940. So I'd like to grow it roughly 8 10%, something like that, um, and get it above 1,000 patrons. Um, and then with Comic Lab, I'd also like to get it where we have within 12 months from now, or start by the time we're at 12 months from now, we have a consistent sponsor every week. Like this yeah. week, we have uh, Wacom as a sponsor. I would love every week of the show to have a sponsor, uh, which I think would be fun. Mm-hmm. Um, and then creative development wise, I'm really excited, Brad, to go on this Alaska trip with you. Yeah. I think it's going to be fun for our friendship. I think it's going to be great for our art. I think it's going to be relaxing for our hearts. Uh, I, I, and enlivening. For I think it's going to be damaging to our livers. <laughs> uh, or if you're Dave Kellett, it's like a 90% s'more diet. It's a diet based entirely on s'mores. Um, so, and then creative wise, I also want to keep working on, I've been doing eBay pieces with opaque white, uh, ink mm-hmm. and black on a toned paper. I've been using either a gray toned paper or a light blue gray toned paper. And I really, really liked the, the, the final look of it. Um, and that, so that's just something that creatively I'd like to kind of keep stretching my wings with, because I think it's been, it's nice every few years to have a new kind of drawing or a new style, you know, to, um, yeah to 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 dive in on and um so anyway so that's something that i would like to do for the next 12 months so that's it for a year and then what we're obviously going to circle back around um that's a pretty full year uh three years from now i want to have one and a half or two more drive books completed yeah so that'll be in 2021 there'll be the next hardcover and then in 2023 the next hardcover um I'll be honest, Brad, that, and this is something to talk about, I'm honestly not sure what to do next for Sheldon books after the children's book comes out this next 12 months. Yeah. Um, that's something I would like to talk to you about because I I don't know. I don't know what my goalpost is or if I need one with Sheldon anymore. I don't know. Um, financial, within the next three years, the the show that Fred and I are developing, if it gets going and if it gets legs after we kickstart it, I would like to sell that show to a low end streamer. Mm-hmm. And by low end, I mean it's not going to be top tier like Disney Plus or Hulu or Netflix or Amazon Prime. Right. I'm happy to sell it to, you know, Charter Arts Channel or whatever it is. You know, something. <laughs> crackle. Yeah, crackle, exactly. Just something to get it out into a wider audience. I would love to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd love to get Comic Lab up to a thousand patrons, again with a sponsor every week. I'd love to get Drive to um 1500 patrons and then creative development wise within the next three years i'm being realistic by saying three uh i would like to learn csp i think photoshop has been great for me Mm -hmm. but literally everyone especially you is like david get your shit together and learn csp so i've got to learn that um and then five years brad uh from now this is a goal i've had for a long time i want to sell drive as a live action with cgi streaming show um, you know, anywhere eight to 16, uh, episodes, a, a season, yes. three to five seasons. Yes. Um, I honestly think it, we will still be in peak TV five years from now. Uh, Disney has a ton of money to pour in. Netflix is not, has a lot of money, but they have a lot of survival instincts. Um, Hulu will be around. Um, Amazon prime will be around. CBS all access will be around. All the other networks will have uh, big streamers within the next five years. Mm-hmm. We might start seeing consolidation with the next five years, but I still think it'll be a great time to sell a TV show. Yeah. And I honestly think drive has legs to it for a uh, show. And so I think with my wife's help, I would like to try to develop that into a TV show. Also, and this is more on a personal level, I would like to have a drive box set and I want mm-hmm. it to be gorgeous. I want to reissue all of the books uh maybe like i was saying for your book earlier maybe leatherette or leather uh i want it to be really classy and i want to separate out acts one two three four five uh, of drive from the tales of the drive which are these separate standalone stories yeah so that you would have the full story of drive and then a separate volume in the box set that would have all the standalone stories um and i think it's going to look really nice and then financially within five years uh i would really like to have a second employee um, mm. Mm. my goal there is I would like to do like Beth works full time. Um, and we're in a studio about 50 weeks out of the year. There's probably two weeks of vacation or something. I don't know. Uh, maybe three, I, I forget. But uh, what I would like to do is a second employee that's kind of starting a manga system where 
Uh, Beth becomes basically art director and the new employee is a junior artist designer, but also has other skills. I mean, ideally, it would be someone like Beth or myself who is not only an artist, but has uh, a worldlier ability to handle projects, to do right. some financial stuff here and there if they have to, figure out some technology stuff if they have to. Like, I, what I mean by that is I don't want the kind of artist that's like, I just know how to hold a pen. I don't know anything about, <laughs> oh, like fanning themselves. I couldn't dare yeah. to m- manage a project. <laughs> oh. Like, yeah. I want another self-starter like Beth or myself who can handle things, do things, figure it out. Um, if I, I don't have to direct all the time. Um, but one of the things that I always, uh, I, I was never close to them and didn't really follow them much, but I always liked Penny Arcade's hire of Kiko Villasenor. Do you remember him, Brad? Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's their, their art director. And he started off, I think, as just their first art hire. Mm-hmm. And then as Penny Arcade grew, he became the creative director. And that's what I would like to do with and for Beth, is that make her in charge first of one employee, and then ideally in the five to 10 year range, more employees. I think that would be fun. Yeah. So uh, that's my big five year goal there. And then finally, for creative development, like you, I would like to be invited back. It doesn't have to be through Comic Lab, it could be through any way to Comic uh, Cat in Japan, which mm-hmm. I really want to get to. Yeah. Um, and Angoulême in France. And uh, I think it just, those are amazing to get to. It'd be super fun. And then I oddly, Brad, I tacked on one 10-year goal. Mm. Uh, I would like to to film and edit and make with Fred, Stripped Revisited, uh, where we go back to everyone that's still alive and we do a follow-up film documentary about where comics are 10 years from now. So <sighs> that would be about the 15-year mark of when Stripped came out. Uh, and for those that don't know, Strip was my documentary on co- the state of comics about four years ago. Um, so if we do it about 10 years from now, it'll be about the 15-year anniversary. It'd be so fun to talk about how uh, how comics have changed, what survived, what's different. So that's my one, three, five-year goals and I guess one 10-year goal. Oh, uh, Brad you... Geiger, now it's your turn. Hit me. What do you got for me? You You're dirty like, bird. First of all, I goal I... number one, stop being a jerk. <laughs> goal number <I> two, <laughs> work on that body odor. Goal number three, the foot smell. What can we do about it? <laughs> goal number four, they got a new thing out. It's called soap and water. Look into <laughs> it. Uh, so I, I, I'm really upset with you because I thought I had the cake topper and you came in with your 10 year uh, goal and t- Totally, totally uh, ruined my thunder. So uh, here's what's interesting. I've got little stars by all the times that you and I converged. Okay. And there's a lot of stars here. So going down my list of goals for you, uh, the children's book is a is a natural. Uh, develop that mystery side project is a natural. Uh, I've got one more goal, and that's to be a, a become a guest on a mystery cartoon interview side project. Keep chasing those so dreams, that's... Brad. Keep chasing those dreams. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that we converged on. Uh, I also that my goal for you financially is very similar to my own goal, and that is to start considering uh, putting some of those Sheldon archives uh, behind a paywall, finding a way to monetize those archives. Okay. Okay. Uh, in, and, and that would mean integrating Patreon into your website, redesigning that Sheldon website, and and I, you've got such a large repository of archives uh, that uh, same as mine aren't doing anything for you we used to monetize them with ads and now they're really not doing a lot and i don't even buy that people are you know doing web searches and finding the comic that way anymore as much as it happened back in the early 2000s uh it's literally in my opinion sitting there fallow uh so I think in in the next year, uh, and you could easily move that to a three year goal too. But sometime in the it, within the next year or so, uh, we both need to start thinking about monetizing our archives by either uh, uh, making them a Patreon protected uh, paywall and or building in subscription right. uh, units to our site. Right. Uh, I also, for your one year, fin- a creative goal had going to Alaska with me and drinking scotch. So that's, we we uh, totally crisscrossed <laughs> there. 
<laughs> uh, for your three year, I had scotch written in big letters too. Uh, <laughs> just, just all of a so sudden, you know. it switches to the kind of sharpie that's gigantic. It's just like, <laughs> <laughs> yes. So now, three year plan. Uh, I had, uh, d- in fact, I had the same thing using uh, Small Fish uh, Studios uh, and using your obviously uh, the fact that your wife knows these waters very well. Uh, although I said develop drive through small fish for TV streaming services, although you said live action, you, you want to drive to be a live action. Yeah. So here's why I think I, it's doable. Um, it's, uh, it would be an expensive show. So this is a hard, it's a hard pitch because it's content that, um, has not previously been filmed before. So, but I got to tell you with, um, the Mandalorian, which is a very expensive show that Disney is making yeah. and with Carnival Row that Amazon threw a lot of money at, uh, why am I uh-huh. doing that voice? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> What I'm getting at is those mix of live action and CGI shows are very expensive right now. And let's make no mistake, it'll still be expensive. But the technology mm-hmm. within three to five years, especially five years, is is going to change the price levels dramatically for that kind of stuff. Um, yeah. And so when I think of a show like The Expanse and what they're able to do for that budget, which is not very big, um, mm-hmm. that although it got bigger when it moved to Amazon, that... Um, that kind of show, I think Drive could be developed into very easily, not very easily, what am I saying? Uh, that show could be developed um, with Drive having live action actors and CGI aliens. And I think it would be kind of cool. Like if mocap gets much, much cheaper in the next five years, you know? Yeah. Yeah, that's that's interesting. Although I got I'm so enamored with your art style that I would also love to see it just as a straight up animated piece as well. Uh, and that's what I had written. You know what's funny? So you uh, you you wanted to see animation then? Is that interesting? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's funny because uh, my wife told me the other day. She's uh, was well, I should, maybe shouldn't reveal this, but she's like she was like I was talking <laughs> to a network the other day. They're looking for adventure uh, animation, and I was like, really? Hmm. <laughs> uh, so uh, anyway, long story short, I do want to develop it in some capacity. For whatever reason, I would like to see it live action. I just think it would be interesting to see. Um, the Spanish Empire, the Galactic Spanish Empire in live action. It would feel akin yeah. to the Empire in Dune a little bit. Um, like mm-hmm. I, I, th- I think it would be neat. Um, and I'm oh, sorry, I cut you off. Keep going. What were you gonna? What was no, your no, no. I, 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 I like so. So we we meshed up very well there. Uh, your your three year financial plan, in my opinion, is very similar to mine. We both need to be planning for a post Patreon future, just in case. I don't I expect it to happen, I know. but I think we You're need right. to and do I, it. And that's that's now. Here, here's the deal. Even if something happens with Patreon, uh, they've already let the genie out of the bottle in terms of people willing, being w- willing and and very, oh, if, if, eager. To pay for content, this idea of subscribing for for content is in a completely different place of acceptance than it was five or, or definitely ten years ago. So that genie's out of the bottle, which means that it's going to be a very easy pivot for us to set up subscription uh, areas on our site. Uh, it's going to mean learning a little bit new way of doing business in terms of who's running that subscription and how it runs and how it's administrated. Um, but I, if, you know, for almost 10 years, the other thing is webcomics.com is going to be 10 years old, uh, in 2020. And, uh, I, I've been doing webcomics.com as a subscription basis on a very, very simple outlay. That has been something that I've been able to administer on my own and just uses PayPal Okay, and, and can be expanded. But I, I mean, I, there are very simple ways of doing this is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. And, uh, we need to, we need to start pivoting. Well, listen, as a friend, as a friend, I want you to keep reminding me of that because I have come to rely on Patreon for, let's see, I'm doing the math in my head. It's probably ends up being about 40 to 50% of my income last year, maybe a little less than that, maybe 40% of my income last year. That's a big chunk. And if Patreon yep. shit the bed all of a sudden and, and keeled, I'd be in trouble. 40% is a big, a big, you know, chunk. And I have no backup preparation. So that's why I'm saying I thank you. And I need you to keep on me about that because I have no backup for when Patreon goes away. And had you asked me a year ago, well, there's no way Patreon's going to go away. I would have said no, because their core business model is great and they're executing on it. But I'm getting increasingly nervous about 
Patreon having to pay the Piper with their VC money and some of the weirder projects that they're taking on. Um, mm -hmm. And we can talk about that in a future show, but I don't, yeah. I'm, I am afraid of them drifting from their core competency more and more and either making some big financial outlay that costs them or, so you're right, we need to be prepared for them going uh, south, you know? Um, yeah. So yes, all right. So and then keep going. What what are the other goals for Dave Kelly? Your three year creative plan. Try this one on for size. See what you think of it. I would love just having done this show with you for a year and a half now. I would love to see you build a tight eight stand up routine and and perform stand up somewhere in the Los Angeles area, uh, just because I think you'd be so good at it. Between your 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 quick wit, your 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 very uh, adept comedy, and the fact that you can do accents and voices way better than I ever could, I'd love to see you experiment with stand up comedy. Uh, okay, my reaction to that is thank you. That's really nice. Um, I so uh, I would take a parallel choice. I I don't necessarily like stand up. I I did it with my wife in our twenties in L.A. Mm -hmm. and we did it for maybe two years. And I got I got up to having a tight ten, yeah, uh, maybe a tight fifteen if I was stretching it. Um, and I I gotta say I loved comedy. I love the performative aspect of it. Comedians as a class are miserable human beings. <laughs> <laughs> the level, the level of sadness and anger and alcoholism is um, is no yeah. joke, Brad. It's noticeable as a career. So, like, you're talking backstage, and you're like, "Oh, I'm not happy talking to you. This is a sad conversation." Um, yeah. But in contrast, um, uh, improv. I mm -hmm. love, I love improv. <laughs> Oh my God, do I, and the mood is so different in improv. It's it's more outgoing and engaging people, and it literally is just the act of, I want to do solo comedy because people don't like me, versus I like being with people and making jokes and making them laugh. Let's do improv. <laughs> that one decision gets a totally different personality, I found. And so yeah. if I lived closer, Brad, I would do Upright Citizens Brigade all day long. I write better when I do it. I did it for about yeah. two, two and a half, three years in LA. I loved Upright Citizens Brigade, which is a, is a version of... Um, I don't know. They exist in LA and New York. I don't know if people know them, but they're, they're an improv group. Um, yeah. And uh, I loved it. I would do it all the time, except this is an hour drive from my house in LA to get over to the UCB. And that sucks when you have kids and you can't do it. So yeah. Uh, yeah. if Gloria and I move to a different part of LA, which we might in the next four years or five years, um, I may start doing UCB. But the point is, I like your goal for me. That's a fun one. Yeah. Yeah. And, and in fact, I, 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 I debated between stand up and improv and I, and I knowing, knowing very well what you just said is, is the case, uh, because I think we've talked about it before. I should have gone with improv. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I just, I just would love to see you performing more. Cause I, again, I think that that feeds back creatively as well. So now we go to my five-year plans for you. And man, I'm telling you, I thought this was such a brilliant one. Stripped part two, the sequel. Although, and, and by the way, I think your idea is better. But uh, my idea was instead of going back and seeing where are they now, which is always, for me, might be a fun uh, second reel or bonus footage type film, where are they now? I would like to see you do the same exact thing that the original script did, but instead of talking about the transition from syndication to independent, talk about the transition now that everything is virtually on the web, talk about the transition from an ad model to a crowdfunding model, and talk about also as a side uh, of that, uh, these people who started out in web comics 25 years ago and where they are in their careers overall. In other words, they were all bright, white-eyed, uh, chipmunk-faced uh, uh, newbies in, in the 2000s. Now they're anything but what has happened with their careers. What, looking back, what did it all mean? Uh, and and I, I guess maybe that dovetails, uh, dovetails into where are they now. But I, I, would, I would be even more interested in the new transition uh, that were fa that we faced in the past five years from an ad model to a crowdfunding model and what ramifications that had. 
Yeah, I think you're right that that would be an interesting watch. I also thought to myself that I would like to do something about how, and it's something you've talked about before, how we were like, no more gatekeepers. We're running our own business. We're independent. La, 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 la. And how slowly but surely cartooning has returned to gatekeepers where people want to get a check from Webtoons or people want to get a check (laughs) from from Go Comics or this or that or whatever it is online. Like uh, Mm -hmm. the, the desire to be independent and make your own living and control your own future is slowly being replaced by corporations that are like, I'll do that for you for a 55% yeah. cut, you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> and and the, the sad part is that they're taking the bait again. Yeah. And I think that's probably an eternal of artists that are like, I ears and fingers in my ear. La la la. I don't want to deal with business. La 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 la. Mm-hmm. And so it would be an interesting film to talk about how that's creeping back in again. Yeah. You know? no, yeah, absolutely. And also just how publishing has turned from publishing, uh, you know, publishing, publishing to social media publishing and what the effect that social media has had on publishing itself, which is a whole dissertation you could do. Yeah. And within five to 10 years, um, the comic book shop will a thousand percent not exist anymore. Yeah. And it's, it's very strong that uh, any version of the floppy won't exist anymore. And so what does that do yeah. to what were traditionally comic books? That's an interesting topic too. Absolutely. So, all right. Any other goals for me for one, three or five years? Five year financial, uh, same as me, repackage, republish a whole truckload of content that we will have amassed by this point. We, we you're, you're at the tipping point at that point where you've got a whole lot of properties that you can just put out and create passive income from. And so I think that needs to be on your, on your, uh, uh, on your horizon. And finally, uh, your five-year uh, creative goal is to accompany me at Angolem doing a comic lab appearance <laughs> and, <laughs> and, 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 uh, and, and instead of scotch, I guess we got to switch to red wine, but I can, I can live with that. All managed, and, all managed. Yeah. And in five years, you know what? Your kids are going to be a little bit older. They're going to be a little bit more independent. I, and, and, and you are the kind of person that I think would, would very much feed off of this. I'd love to see you do like a month long in uh, uh, artist in residence program somewhere where, uh, whether it's at at the Schultz museum or a, a place like that, where you just go there, check in for a month. You're the artist, you're doing your stuff. You're talking to people about what you do. I think you'd be a great candidate for an artist in residence program. That's funny that you should say that because I've been looking at the one I kind of want to do. It's not necessarily a month long, but Amtrak has this thing called artists on trains. Have you seen this? I think it's called artists on trains. Yes, I've heard of this. Where you, you get a free cross country Amtrak trip. Uh, and you, the only request is that you create art about it. And I was like, that kind of sounds fun. I would love to do it. I'd create a comic strip series about riding the rails. That'd be fun. Oh yeah. Especially if they gave you one of those sleeper cars, you get to sleep on the train. I just like in the movies, you know, I'd, I'd love that. Yeah. The other goal, and I didn't, I should have maybe put it on my list, but since you mentioned the artist residency, Mm -hmm. another somewhere in the five to 10 year range that I would like to do is, uh, the very talented artist, Gene Yang, um, was the library of Congress's ambassador for comics a year or two back. And Mm -hmm. I was thinking to myself, uh, in granted, it's a more egotistical moment. Like, you know what? I could do that. I could be the Library yes. of Congress's ambassador for comics. I've got two master's <laughs> degrees in comics. I talk about <laughs> comics all the time. We've written books mm-hmm. about how to make comics. I've made a shit ton of comics myself. Like, uh, yes. and, and I have a love for the art form. I think that that would be a really fun gig to get for when, as my yeah. kids are older and I could travel more. Um, so that that's not necessarily on my goal list, but it's something in the back of my mind that I'd like to shoot for. Mm-hmm. I think that's a good goal. So, Brad, you had good goals for me in general. I want to say thank you to me. You uh, you have course corrected me on a few of them, which is good. I I do have to think of backups for Patreon because I have started to rely yeah. on it too much. Um, I like that you and I are both thinking about a drive show. I like that we're both thinking about Stripped. Um, I like that we're both uh, looking at upping our patron count for our various properties. Um, mm-hmm. So my question to you, though, because you had about repackaging, and we can end the show on this, maybe, because we're yeah. going long into truth today. Um, so Sheldon uh, has 4,000 strips in the archive, right? Maybe it's coming up on yeah. 4,500. 4, I don't know. Um, I have not done a straight Sheldon book since 2012. By that, I mean I did volume mm-hmm. one, volume two, all the way up to volume eight. I've not done a volume nine. Um, 
I don't know, Brad, and this hasn't happened to me in a long time in my career, I don't know what to do next. I don't know if I continue quietly doing Sheldon when I feel like it, and that's fine, and I sell the original, and then it goes in the archive. Or do I do another Sheldon book? Is there an audience for a Sheldon book anymore? I don't, I don't know. And if I do, do I do the best of the last seven years and call that volume nine? Or do I kind of pick up uh, like some year seven and year six from uh, all that time ago and do a book with that and then do a volume 10? No, I th- I'll tell you what you do. You, you're, you are at the point now with Sheldon with that amount of content that you take a page from Scott Kurtz's book and you publish your version of your awesomeology where it's the complete compendium, every Sheldon strip. Huh. So here's what I here's what I hear <laughs> I when you say that. Though I know I recognize that that is an option. I feel like that yeah. is a shit ton of work for very little payoff. Um, and you and your heart of hearts probably feel that too. Like you can sense how big the Sheldon audience is, and are people going to want to pay a hundred, hundred fifty bucks for a giant Sheldon book? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I don't know I, if that audience is sunsetting. I don't know. Well, I don't know whether they're sunsetting, but I, but when you I, so here's the deal. I'm gonna I'm gonna give you another way of looking at that. Uh, Sheldon book ten is not particularly exciting. Okay, that's a fair re- response. Yeah, right. And in other words, there's been nine books. This is going to be another one just like that. It, it'll do as well as a, a Sheldon book can be expected to do, right? Which is very, very well. I'm not, I'm not damning you with faint praise. This is all good stuff. You'd be, you'd, you'd hit your Kickstarter. You'd make it go. You'd put it into the dis- distribution. You'd be fine. But it's nothing to necessarily write home to mother about because there's been nine Sheldon books before it, right? Right. But a huge, complete collection of Sheldon is special. That's exciting. That's something that's never been done. That's something that has, uh, especially if you make it a limited edition, that this is the only time you're going to print this and then it's done. Now you've got uh, you, you've got scarcity. You are driving up a demand because of something that has never been done before. Uh, it, it, it's special. It's scarce. It, it, I, I think it's a different category. Huh. I, so what I feel like it is, <laughs> just to reemphasize, I feel like it's a shit ton of work collating all. Okay, well, hold on, hold on. Let's go back. Let's go back for just a second. Okay. Not so much a shit ton of work. You take your interior pages from one through nine. You, 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 within an hour, you've got those books recollated. No, no. I, can I stop you before you go too far? Oh no! I have to go. Four, I have to go four strips tall because if I, 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 because I can see right now on my shelf uh-huh. books one through eight, and they're too thick. Yeah, I, you can't have a spine that thick. I have to stack them four tall. Oh. I have to do what I have to do what what Kurtz did with Awesomeology and go tall and thick rather than yeah. keeping the same size. Um, so I already have to reformat. And now you can certainly you can find all those files. You can put them all in order. But then you, you the first several years of Sheldon, you're in the clear because they're four panel comics and they're that horizontal sh- uh, shape. And then you started getting creative yeah i got <laughs> i got experimental and i got more. and now you've got to solve those problems right because when i when i kind of stopped producing books in 2012 i kind of was giving myself leave to have fun and create new f- types of formatted comics and i frankly got wild in a way that wasn't thinking about the final book and so now i'd right. have to pay the piper for that and uh and just to reemphasize, 4,000 strips to format, Brad, to find the file, find the high-res file, make sure it's okay, make, double-check that you have the right one of the other 10 versions that might be sitting on my hard drive, lay it well, out. Well, this, this would definitely be a black-and-white book. <sighs> yeah, in which case is a bummer because Beth's been doing fantastic coloring the last three, four, five years, and it's, it would be— Yeah, I sh- know, but uh, introducing a color to everything you just said— I mean, oh, no, 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 not recoloring anything. No, no. Agreed. Agreed. What I would probably do is like the last four folios of the book would be color and everything else would be black and white. You know what I mean? Yeah. Although, like, see, the thing about it is I I, what would it be? Does it make it a better book is what you're saying? Your your black and white art is Beth's coloring is is 
gorgeous and it's fantastic. But for an archive tome like this, uh, number one, you're gonna make you're gonna bring your printing costs way down by sticking with black and white. Number two, you're gonna Im- eliminate ninety percent of your file issues that you're worried about checking to make sure the file's all right. Yeah, you're, not uh, you're gonna be able to print this thing out and eyeball it and see where the problem spots are. And of course, then there's consistency where it's just black and white from start to finish. And your work stands up very nicely in black and white. Yeah. Um, Part of this, Brad, and to give people a broader picture, is that I am at a crossroads and have been for the last three or four years, Mm -hmm. frankly, with Sheldon, where I'm not sure where I want it to go. And I think that's a fair summary of it. And it's okay to admit that publicly. I'm not happy about it. I'm not proud of it. Yeah. But I've been doing Sheldon for 20 years now. There's 4,000 strips in the archive. Um, I still love drawing those characters and writing for those characters. I just don't love them. Uh, I, the fairest way to say it is as much as I used to. They're not my be-all, end-all. Yeah. I have other projects in mind. And the question is whether I continue to pour time and resources into making some new Sheldon book mm-hmm. or whether I just let the archives live And then use the website of Sheldon as my launching pad for things like Anatomy of Authors or Anatomy of Animals or my children's book that I'm going to be launching in a few months. And my heart is leaning towards the latter, but I feel like I need to make a firm decision one way or the other here. Um, And this is one of those moments where if you don't set the goal, the goal starts to set itself, you know? Um, Uh And I've been very (laughs) passive. I've been very (laughs) passive in my decision making about what to do next with Sheldon. And so maybe I'll just make this a public discussion of you over the next couple of months you'll hear me talking about what i should be doing with that and and maybe soliciting yeah. some feedback from brad and from listeners it's an interesting cross I, like i very much see as brad now knows why brethren walked away why waterson walked away why larson walked away you reach a point where yeah. you're just like i kind of have said most of what i wanted to say with this and now it's time to move on to something else right and that's natural i think i think that's okay i don't i don't feel shame about it anymore um, but I, I, what I, where I don't feel pride is that I need to somehow figure out what the, f- the format and the steps are going forward. And, mm-hmm. um, that's still an ongoing process. So interesting. Anyway, that's a, that's what a terrible day want to end the show on, on that note. Like, well, <laughs> Dave doesn't know what he's doing next with Sheldon. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, no, I look at it. I look at it as hopeful because I know this is going to be a, larger topic and something that we're going to probably revisit in the weeks to come. And I, I, I refuse to think that there's not an answer out there that, that isn't a, uh, a, a good answer and, and something that has its own excitement. So, uh, for me, this is not necessarily a, a bad ending so much as it's, uh, a portent of things to come. Yeah, and honestly, and I say this genuinely, not jokingly, the best time to talk about this is you and I sitting on the back porch of a cabin with a beer in our hands in Alaska, looking at the Kodiak and and talking about comics. That's really going to be a lovely yep. trip for us to plan out the next stages of our lives. It's going to be great. In between shouts of, Hey, Bear! Hey, hey Bear! Bear! Hey, Bear! Stanley here! <laughs> hey, Bear! <laughs> and on that note, you've been listening to Comic Lab, the show about making comics and making a living from comics. Your hosts have been my friend and confidant, Brad Geiger, the editor of webcomics.com and the cartoonist of Evil Inc. at evil-comic.com. And my friend, Dave Kellett, co-director of Stripped and the cartoonist of Sheldon at SheldonComics.com and Drive at DriveComic.com. I noticed I was only a friend and not a confidant. The Comic Lab theme song is used with permission from Andy Creighton at TheWorldRecord.net. And this episode and all episodes was edited by our pal Matt Woodard at Woodsong Productions over at www.woodsong.media. And once again, our sponsor for this week is the great folks of Wacom over at W-A-C-O-M. Brad and I are big fans and both users of it so it is a perfect sponsorship for the show check them out wacom.com and comic lab is made possible by your support at patreon.com slash comic lab so we're gonna say that twice patreon.com slash comic lab Thank you for being my friend. Travel down the road and back again.
Your heart is pure. Bum, bum. You're a friend and a confidant. But let it do. And if I do a party, <laughs> inviting everyone you knew. Boy, we were not meant to sing. That's, well, boy. <laughs> Do you want to be in sci-fi? I think I should have been in sci-fi. Okay, bye. 